unprecedented regulation of the financial sector through our president's strong leadership. This administration has begun the early steps to bring our troops home, which is no small accomplishment. This government has fought for and won the right for every man, woman, and child to receive adequate health care for their lifetime. So much has been accomplished, yet we still have so far to go. That is why we are having this rally today, folks. This is why I'm proud that I wore the uniform of the United States Army. This gathering today is why I'm honored to say I am a veteran who fought with pride and dignity on behalf of my country so my fellow Americans could come together as one nation and proclaim in one voice that no matter your race, your ethnicity, your social economic status, your religion, or your sexual orientation, we are all patriots. We are all one people. And we will fight to support those men and women who risk their lives in defense of our freedoms. America should not merely pay lip service to our military men and women. We should embrace them wholeheartedly. They are left to continue to fight for their family's financial security here at home, even though having left for their battlefields. And just as they support the fight together overseas, we must continue as one nation in these difficult economic times to stand together and support each other. Let not this adversity shatter our spirits, but instead galvanize us as a people. As one nation, we will proudly let this world know that the United States of America is now, has always been, and shall forever be the land of opportunity, hope, and freedom. Thank you. Where are my young people in the house tonight, today? Where are the young people at? And I don't just mean young physically, but I also mean where are the young in spirit? I come here today not only representing young people of Los Angeles, California, but also representing young people from all across this nation. Many times we are, we are the ones most, we are the most forgotten population, the population most affected by failed public policies, the population damaged by institutions of incarceration. Unemployment hit us way before the recession hit this country. But we are also the population with great historical significance and a history full of young people standing up for what they believe is right and is just. From the walkouts in East Los Angeles demanding cultural and adequate education to the walkouts and sit-ins in the South during the 60s demanding civil rights. Young people have been on the fore are the forefront, on the front lines of change in every major social movement of this country's history. I am fortunate that at the age of 23, I not only have a job and helping to green our planet, but I also have a lifelong career in social justice and social change. This person that you see today was almost lost to a life of incarceration. This person you see today could have been a mere statistical failure. This person you see today could have continued on a path of destruction. But this person you see today is set on a path like Malcolm X and Gandhi, a life of fighting for justice. I was one of the fortunate ones who found the chance to continue my education and belong to a community of peers seeking to make community transformation through a program called Youth Build, 
where the entire staff invested themselves in helping us take ownership of our lives and responsibility for our families. Our governments need to invest in its people again and recommit to the investment to the young people of America. Now, just because I have a steady income, it does not mean that I will relax and just let life ride itself out or be fooled to believe that everything is okay. If I am eating, but my brother is starving, then I am starving as well. If I have a home, but my sister is homeless, then I am homeless as well. If I have total civil rights, but others around me don't even have human rights, then something is not right. If my gender is respected, but other genders are pushed to a life of seclusion, then something is not right. Until that something becomes right, we young people must stand and will continue to stand up, just like our history has proven that we have. Injustice somewhere is injustice everywhere. Oppression somewhere is oppression everywhere. Social justice and the reinvestment of people must not only happen somewhere, it must happen everywhere. I am Ellie Flores from Los Angeles, California, and I thank you for standing up with me today. But the real challenge will be for us to continue standing when you return home. Will you stand when you go back home? of HBO's great series, The Wire. Now he's back on HBO in a new hit series called Treme. He is also working hard to rebuild his hometown of New Orleans. Please welcome Mr. Wendell Pierce. Good afternoon. One nation working together. One nation working together. Now people remember him for I Have a Dream. But after the March on Washington and the passage of the Civil Rights Bill, Martin Luther King shifted his attention to another dream, economic justice for all Americans. In a speech at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in Atlanta, Georgia, he said, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. As we talk about where do we go from here, that we honestly face the fact that the movement must address itself to the question of reconstructing the whole of American society. There are 40 million poor people here. And one day we must ask the question, why are there 40 million poor people in America? in America. And when you begin to ask that question, you are raising questions about the economic system, about a broader distribution of wealth. Now, when I say question the whole society, it means ultimately coming to see that the problem of racism, the problem of ex exploitation, and the problem of war are all tied together. These are the triple evils that are interrelated. So I conclude by saying again today that we have a task. Let us go out with a divine dissatisfaction. Let us be dissatisfied until America will no longer have a high blood pressure of creeds and an anemia of deeds. Let us be dissatisfied until the tragic walls that separate the outer city of wealth and comfort and the inner city of poverty and despair shall be crushed by the battering rams of the forces of justice. Let us be dissatisfied until those that live on the outskirts of hope are brought into the metropolis 
of daily security. Let us be dissatisfied until slums are cast into the junk heaps of history and every family is living in a decent, sanitary home. Let us be dissatisfied until the dark yesterdays of segregated schools will be transformed into the bright tomorrows of quality, integrated education. Let us be dissatisfied until integration is not seen as a problem, but as an opportunity to participate in the beauty of diversity. So let us be dissatisfied until men and women, however black they are, will be judged on the basis of the content of their character and not on the basis of the color of their skin. Let us be dissatisfied. Let us be dissatisfied until from every city hall, justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Let us be dissatisfied and men will recognize that out of one blood, God made all men to dwell upon the face of this earth. Let us be dissatisfied until that day when nobody will shout white power, when nobody will shout black power, but everybody will shout, talk about God's power and human power. One nation working together, one nation working together. Thank you very much.